Hello, my name is Andrew. Welcome to my kitchen. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the question, do I need a $500 kitchen knife in my life? Clearly it's not a necessity, but it's actually something that I've been wondering for a long time. Not necessarily that price point, but I've been personally really interested in finely made kitchen knives for a while now, hoping to upgrade what I have in my home kitchen and wondering at what price point I would find most satisfying. Because you can get a great knife for less than $100, or you could get something really fantastic and custom made for like over a thousand. At $500, it's bound to be a very exciting knife, but do I want the stress day to day of having to use this thing that I could potentially break or ruin? Do I want that in my life? So, let me show you the knife. This is a Suisen Inox Honyaki 270 millimeter Kuritsuke. And it's actually like $470, sorry. And this was purchased at Corin in New York City. If you're familiar with the Worth It show, there was an episode about knives and Corin was featured in the middle tier. I wasn't in that video, but I was actually behind the scenes filming and producing. Vincent, who I met at that time, helped me pick out this knife. And this knife was purchased by About To Eat. This isn't an ad or it wasn't given to us for free. So this will be sort of a product review, but not really a product review of this high-end knife that I've been now using for the last month at home. I'm gonna share with you what that experience has been like. I also wanna specify that I am definitely not an expert in knives. If you're interested in a knife for yourself, I encourage you to reach out to an expert like Vincent. But I wanted to share what I think is the unique experience of being a really interested amateur who hasn't already been there, done that with the thing I'm interested in and dive into the deep end with something that I think I find very desirable and give you that first time impression. First, let me explain how I decided on this particular knife. This was the first knife I bought when I started getting really interested in cooking. It's an eight inch Victorinox chef's knife. You often see these recommended as being a great entry point. The next knife I got was this Mac Nakiri. This was given to me as a gift. It's based on a traditional Japanese knife shape for cutting vegetables. It has this very flat edge which encourages a push cutting style. When you have even a little bit of forward motion, it just amplifies the cutting potential of whatever knife you're using. And is really the only way that I cut things now. And then there's this knife. This is a Suisen high carbon petty knife that I actually purchased at Corin after that worth it knife shoot. And it had a lot of unique features that I wanted to try out for the first time. It's carbon steel, which is not stainless. Acidic foods will discolor it slightly. Generally speaking, carbon steel can get much harder, so it gets a very sharp edge and then can hold that edge for much longer. It also has an asymmetric bevel. So at the very edge, there's slightly more slant on one side than the other. It's a 70 to 30 ratio. And I thought that this would just be, you know, kind of a fun souvenir, something that I used in the interim until I got my big boy knife. But it's really now my favorite and I'm kind of convinced it's the only knife I need. It's super versatile. Even for tasks where a larger knife would be more suitable, I find myself reaching for this one just because the quality of the steel makes it a really enjoyable experience. In fact, when I first spoke to Vincent about this video, the first recommendation he had was, oh, have you tried a petty knife? So on to the Kuritsuke. I mainly wanted something that was gonna be longer than any of my other knives because I felt like I was missing the ability to slice large things nicely. But I also wanted something that was versatile and could be used every day to do most tasks. And I learned from Vincent that this particular knife is sort of a hybrid of a traditional shape with some modern attributes that make it a little more versatile and I'll get into more detail on those later. I was also personally really interested in a knife shape that was a little bit less typical, both because I wanted the opportunity to try something new and because I honestly just find the shape very satisfying. And I think you can't overlook that when making this sort of purchase. There's that intangible want factor. Just its shape alone gives you satisfaction. My first impressions upon receiving the knife, so cool. 
Unboxing something that you're excited for will never get old. There's this inexplicable weak feeling that your hands get when you're holding something for the first time that you're very excited for. I was also surprised that it didn't feel quite as large as I thought it would, given the measurement. 270 millimeters seems to be the upper limit for knives that are termed multi-purpose chef's knives. I was a little worried when making the decision that it would be unwieldy and too niche to use every day, but it's surprisingly comfortable. And I think it's because it's a very lightweight knife. It's very thin and it's actually lighter weight than the eight inch Victorinox knife. And when you have it in a pinch grip where your hand is a little bit further up the blade, it feels very comfortable and manageable to use. There are also lots of subtle quality things about the knife's construction, like the way that the top of the knife and back behind the heel are rounded so it's more comfortable to grip. This is something that's not on my other knives. There's also the traditionally shaped handle, which is satisfyingly thick. It's quite a bit larger than even the Victorinox handle, which I think balances out the overall length very well. So how was it to use every day? I'll admit that at first it was a bit awkward. I think that's just because I wasn't used to the length and where my arm would naturally go if I was using a smaller knife. I just had to adjust that muscle memory. I also got a new cutting board that's much larger, which was honestly overdue for me. Aside from the knife purchase, this is just something I needed. But I opted for one that's this synthetic rubber material. And the advantage of this rubber is that it's much softer on the knife's edge, so your knives should stay sharper for longer. About the sharpness, it is disgustingly sharp, almost disconcertingly sharp. It has a feeling of slipping through food rather than cutting it. And it immediately made me feel like I was better at cutting than I think I actually am. And when I went back to some of my older knives for comparison, my movements instantly felt less graceful. About the steel, this knife is made from a really high-end Swedish stain-resistant steel. And that's one of these modern attributes that makes it a little bit more of a hybrid and a little bit more friendly for everyday use. So how useful was it? It's actually very usable every day, but there is one caveat that I'll get to in a second. The shape turned out to be great. Vincent informed me that the Karitsuke shape combines the virtues of a slicing knife with one that can also handle vegetables. So I could still employ that push cutting style that I've become really fond of. It's also interesting that you could essentially fit this Nakiri inside of the Karitsuke. The Karitsuke is just much longer and with a pointed tip. And the pointed tip is great. You could basically focus up on what's happening at the tip and it suddenly feels like a much smaller knife and you can do nimble detailed stuff. And then you could instantly transition and use the full width of the blade and be cutting something completely different a moment later. And it is so satisfying to use. I think onions quickly became my favorite thing to cut. And what can be a really tedious task turned into something that was just so enjoyable to do. I imagine that this is what it's like if you drive to the supermarket in your Porsche. You know, I'm not a professional race car driver, but does that mean I should be excluded from one of the tactile pleasures that's available out there in the world? The caveat to its usefulness is that when I go to use it, it feels like a commitment. You still have this feeling of, oh my God, this is a really expensive knife. Am I gonna chip it? Am I gonna drop it? Am I gonna damage it somehow while I'm just trying to make dinner here? And sometimes I just don't wanna deal with that annoyance. Maybe this will go away with time, but there are these maintenance considerations that are non-negotiable and can make the knife seem like it's not worth the trouble. Like, you're never gonna leave it at the bottom of your sink to be washed later. Or you should really avoid any hard products, even small bones in a chicken, because you run the risk of chipping that very fine edge. So that brings us back to the question, do I need this expensive knife in my life? Is it worth the trouble? I think there is something nice about having a tool that commands more of your focus. For me, it becomes a decision like, okay, I'm gonna pull out the nice knife and I'm gonna let cooking become this meditative moment. 
Like the sort of cooking you do on a Sunday afternoon where you take your time and you focus on something and just let it unfold. Your attention can be just on this one thing. And it's very satisfying because this thing is imbued with your personal preferences and experiences. And it becomes better as you use it more and become more familiar with it. So for me, yeah, I think I need this knife in my life. And one recommendation that I'm now very confident in making is that if you're now interested in knives and haven't experienced uh, a higher end steel before, you should look at a petty knife, which I now just love my petty knife even more. So that's my knife journey. If there's some other product category you'd like us to explore, please let us know in the comments. But otherwise, thanks for watching.